Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you're new, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with any of your thoughts or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's sign in with Google and SvelteKit. Nothing else is needed here. We're gonna only be using a Google and SvelteKit in order to make this happen. We have this simple application with a home and a sign up page. For simplicity's sake, I've stripped this down to just signing up with Google. You click the button, and if you're signed into your Google account already, you'll just be able to choose which account you'd like to use. Otherwise, you'd be presented with a uh, username and password. Once you select that, we'll send this back to our SvelteKit application and use Google Auth Library to validate that token coming in. And then we'll have access to our access token, refresh token, the scopes, and also the ID token. We'll have access to all of this in our backend. If you want to see how to do this, stay tuned. That's what we're going to do right now. So the very first thing that we need to do in order to make this work is we have to have our developer console set up correctly, and you have to have a Google account in order to make that happen. If you don't have a Google account, create one. Otherwise, open a new tab and type in Google Developer Console in the search bar and click the first option. Inside of here, you're going to need to create a new project. This part's straightforward. All you need is a name and a location. I'm going to use one I've already set up. So once you create your project and click on it, then you'll automatically be presented with this screen that just lists out the name, the ID, and the project number. In the left hand side though, we have a big navigation bar with lots of options. In the very top left hand corner, you want to click the navigation menu and go to APIs and services. And we first have to set up an OAuth consent screen. You can only have one per project. I already have one set up, but I'll just walk through it quickly. You have to have a name and a user support email where your users would send support questions. You can give it a logo. That's what users will see when they are presented with the consent screen. That's not required. All of this stuff in the app domain section is optional. You don't have to put any of that. The authorized domains, uh, you can just put localhost.com. If you're doing a production app, it would be whatever your domain is, .com. Lastly, you do have to have the developer contact information, which in this case is just the same as the support email. Now inside of scopes, you have to have scopes set. This is what your application is going to be accessing for each user. This will be empty by default. You want to click the add or remove scopes. And the basic three that you're going to need are the user info.email, which is seeing the primary Google account email address, a user info.profile, which is all the personal information that the user has publicly available, and then OpenID is associating a person with their Google account. So those are the basic three, but if your application needs other ones, and there's 25 pages here, <laughs> uh, 10 rows per page of options, then you would just set those uh, in here. I will point out that the more access that you're requesting, the more stringent the review is going to be. When you're in testing though, you don't have to worry about application verification or review. Once you move to production, that will come into play. All right, when your scopes are done and you've added everything that you need, then in the next step, you have to have test users. Before you go to production, your app is in test mode. And these are the only email addresses that are going to work. So add in whatever ones you need. And then in the last screen, they just give you a summary. So save all that. And then once that's saved, then we need to come to the credentials section. And inside of here, you need to create a new credential. This will be an OAuth client ID. The application type will be web. The name doesn't matter. This is just gonna be what it shows up as in your console. What you need to put in the authorized JavaScript origin section is the location that's going to be sending the request to Google. So for your case, it's going to be probably localhost, HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And in this case, it's going to be 5173. So go ahead and put that in there. 
And then the next really important section is the authorized redirect URIs. These are the places that Google is going to send the response to. And this is gonna be the place that you're going to need to receive that response. So make sure that that's accurate. For us in this particular example, it will be http colon slash slash local host port 5173 slash OAuth. That's where we're gonna receive that request. There's a couple of things I'm gonna point out. One is this note at the bottom that it says it may take five minutes to a few hours. And so I'm gonna use a credential I've already created. And then the other thing is, here's one that I already have set up. You can see, uh, you can have this set up to receive uh, from multiple origins and send the response to multiple places as well. And this all works. Now in a production application, you probably would only want to set up a one authorized redirect URI, and that would be for tracking purposes so that you can see how many times this is being used. So with the credentials all set, then we need to move to our Svelte Kit application. I'll have obviously all of the source code available for this project in my repository. The link will be in the description. So inside of our Svelte Kit application, I just have a skeleton app here. And the important pieces are, we need to have our environment variable set up and we need to have a client and a secret. These come from the credential that we just created. Inside of your credential, in the top right hand corner, if you've already created it, the ID is right here. And that would go into secret client ID. And the client secret, the key that's used to decode everything, that's listed here. So you copy that and put that in the secret client secret. And I know that that's kind of a funny name, but I wanted to make sure that these names matched. So it's the client ID and the client secret from Google, and we're making those private environment variables in SvelteKit. With your environment variable set, then you have to have the NPM Google Auth library package installed. This is the official Google library for using OAuth 2. So go ahead and do an NPM install Google Auth library. And then with that done, we can get to the good stuff. This application just has a home page and the sign up page. The sign up page is super straightforward. All we have is a form with one button that says uh, sign in with Google. The image that I'm using is right from Google's documentation and there are some requirements when using that as to what it needs to look like. I'll leave a link in the description so you can have access to that as well. The important part in the markup is that when they click the image to submit that form, it triggers the OAuth2 action. So we need a plus page.server file in our signup directory. And this is where the magic is going to happen. Let's go ahead and get going on the code here. First, we need to import redirect, and that's the lowercase r redirect, not the type, from at sign svelte.js slash kit. Then we need our newly installed OAuth library. So import brackets OAuth to client from the Google Auth library. Then we need our secrets. So import secret underscore client underscore ID and secret client underscore secret. And these are going to be coming from dollar sign env slash static slash private. We definitely don't want to make those available in our client facing code. Now this action is going to be um, what sends the request to Google. And then we're going to receive this in another route. Export const actions. And so here we make the OAuth2 and this is going to be an async. And we're actually not going to need anything from the request itself. So we need to first set a redirect URL. This is what tells the client, the Google Auth client, where we're trying to send this back to. This needs to match what we have set in our console. For us, it's going to be HTTP a localhost 5173 slash OAuth. Oh, 
then we need to fire up a new OAuth to client. So OAuth to client equals new OAuth to client. And we need to pass this thing a few pieces of information. We need to first pass it the ID. Then we need to pass it the key, the secret underscore client secret and the redirect URL. So with all of those pieces of information set in our client, now we need to build the URL that triggers all of this action. The way this works is Google creates these super long URLs with all this information. You send it to the API, the API pulls out all of the information and then creates that uh, sign-in page. So what we do is we do const, authorize URL and this is going to be OAuth to client dot generate auth URL and this takes an object we have to first set an access type that's access underscore type and you want to do offline uh, because this will generate a new refresh token now, if you're doing this in production, you would only do that if the refresh token was actually expired. Um, but I'm telling you to set it that way because when you're playing around with this, you're gonna wanna see it a few times. And if you don't have this set, then it will just push you through since you're already signed in. So make sure to set the access type to offline. Here, you need to also define your scopes. And so this would be https colon slash slash www googleapis.com slash auth slash user info dot profile and this is going to match uh, if you'll notice this will match what we have set in our in our scopes you can actually copy and paste these out from the developer console if you go to your developer console and go to your uh, auth consent screen and go into your scopes you can see those listed here. So if you click on these, you'll see that it's got the scope URL right there. They all start with the googleapis.com slash, and then there's the rest of the URL that you put in there. So if you need to get any other ones out, uh, that's an easy way of finding out what they are. You just come back to your consent screen, go to the scopes, and then keep in mind that they all start with the HTTPS www.googleapis.com and then that's where this picks up is slash auth and then whatever else. We only need to put the two in for what we're doing. So we have the user info dot profile and the open ID and then we want to make sure that the prompt gets triggered. So we put consent prompt consent and then we need to tell SvelteKit to throw a redirect, which is going to, which is going to trigger that uh, request to Google. And then we pass it that authorized URL that we used the OAuth to client to generate. That's great. Now we need to set up the way to receive that inside of our routes. We're going to have an OAuth route. I have a blank plus page.server file in here. So let's just go ahead and fill that in. What we're gonna need in here is we are once again going to need a redirect. So lowercase redirect from svelte.js slash kit. And then we're going to need the OAuth client again, OAuth to client and our secrets so we can we can actually just copy this out that would have been faster to copy it off now there's a bunch of different ways that you can trigger this and a bunch of different ways that google will send it back depending on which specific method you're trying to use if you followed along with everything then it's going to come through as a git request so export const git and this will be an async and we're gonna to need to pull the URL out because we're gonna be parsing out a code that comes back. 
we can copy the redirect URL from our action there. We're going to need that. And then we need to parse out a code from the URL params. So we need to await url.searchparams.get code. And you can console.log that if you want here, console.log returned code. And the important part here, what we need to do is we need to try and fire up a new auth client. We can copy that as well. So let's copy this. We're gonna fire up that client again. And then what we need to do is just after this, do a const response equals await o auth to client dot get token and then pass in that code once you have the tokens uh, then you need to set those in the oauth to client so oauth to client dot set credentials r dot tokens that's the response dot tokens and console dot log yourself something out here auth tokens received and then you can set the user const user equals o auth to client dot credentials and then we might as well print those off so you guys can see them credentials user we can catch any errors and just do a console.log and say error logging in with Google and then print the error off. And then lastly, outside of that catch block, uh, let's just go ahead and throw a redirect back to whatever page uh, you would want. This would be a 303. Uh, for our sake, we'll just go back to the home page. All right, give that a save. Now we can go test this out. So inside of our application, let's go ahead and click sign up. Click the sign in with Google. I'm already signed into my Google account so I can just select it. And there we just sent it back to our OAuth endpoint. And here are the credentials. So there's our console.log, auth tokens received, and then the console.log where we're printing off the credentials. Here is everything that comes back inside there. So there's our access token for any access that we need for that user from Google. We can use that. There's our refresh token. Here's the scopes that we defined. And then there's our ID token and the expiration date. So there it is. There is signing in with Google using only SvelteKit and Google. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Take care, and as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.